Welcome to Rice Folk. Come on in. Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, this cold and rainy morning if you're watching this on Sunday morning. We are so glad that you are here with us virtually and that we are going to share this time of worship together. We have an exciting thing to announce to you, which is that today our guest preacher is going to be Reverend Carol Gehring. Many of you know Reverend Carol either from her work here at Wrightsville um, right now or because she was the senior pastor here from 1985 to 1996. In fact, her and David's youngest daughter, Lindsay, was born here at while she was at Wrightsville. Reverend Carol is a gifted preacher and also a leader in our conference. She works with the organization Passion in Partnership to coach new clergy. And she also has served as the Fayetteville District Superintendent and then retired from being the Corridor District Superintendent in Durham, where she was my district superintendent when I went through the ordination process. And so Reverend Carol, since she has retired, has jumped into life here at Wrightsville as a really active member of our racial unity group, as um, active with our outreach to Snipes Academy and doing deep dives into different areas of discipleship that you can see on YouTube. So we are blessed and grateful to have Reverend Carol Gehring give our sermon today. We've got a couple of announcements for you, and these are always available in your e-blast, and so go ahead, we're going to give them to you rapid fire, but check out more information there. Last week, we introduced a new program called Be the Church, and so we are encouraging you to uh, this week and next, all the way up until the beginning of Lent, to be the church by reaching up through worship. And so if you're watching this, you are reaching up, and we invite you to join us for worship next week as well. We have our chili chowder cook-off, and this year the youth group is going to be doing that virtually. For each picture that is posted of your yourself or family um, eating a bowl of chili or chowder, we've got $4 um, that is going to be donated to the youth's ministry with Eden Village. And so if you'd like to sponsor that, you can contact Christina Norville, or you can um, just post a picture of yourself or your family eating chili and chowder. We have a blood drive on February 15th from 9 to 2 that's going to be following COVID safety guidelines. And so please check the e-blast for a link to sign up or call the church office. Today we're having an acolyte and lay reader training for youth and children from 1 to 3 p.m. And we also have a new member class on the calendar. This is going to be our first ever that is going to be held via Zoom, and that will be March 6th at 9.30 a.m. So contact Donna Pinckney if you'd like to sign up for that. And last but certainly not least, we want to celebrate the ministry of Ruth Cotton, the director of our WUMC preschool for many years. And this is Ruth's last day before retirement as our preschool director. And so we want to thank Ruth for all the love that she has put in to the children of our church and community. So if you would like to decorate your car, um, find some balloons or posters, we want to honor her with a car parade at the church this coming Wednesday, February 3rd at 4.30 p.m. And we will also be sharing some information and gratitudes at prayer time about our Tackle Hunger food drive, so stay tuned for that. But now we just invite you to maybe take a deep breath in as we center and prepare for worship that you would maybe take a moment to text a neighbor. May the peace of Christ be with you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, 
Fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Help me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Would you pray with me? Merciful God, you always hear us when we cry out to you, and you stay close when we are in distress. It is you in whom we seek refuge, and you deliver us again and again and again. This day, let praise flow from our mouths to your ears, because we can taste and see that you are good. Let us not only hear of you, but see you with our own eyes through your word. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name, our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. And now I invite you to join us in our opening hymn. As always, the words will be found on your screen. morning. This week's scripture is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. 
for you repay to all according to your work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christ beside me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, King of my heart. Christ within me, Christ below me, Christ above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. We come to God in prayer knowing that God hears us when we cry out. And God also hears our words of thanks and gratitude. We continue to lift up our country um, in the face of COVID and other challenges. And we also lift up our gratitude for the ways that folks are being the hands and feet of Christ. And so we just want to share one of those moments of light from this week. Our outreach committee would like to thank everyone who helped us tackle hunger this week. And a big thanks to Donna Hudson and all the members of the outreach committee who braved the winter weather to help us reach out in love to our neighbors. I'm gonna read you a couple of statistics. Despite rain on Wednesday and cold on Thursday, we paraded through the parking lot with bags and boxes of food for those who are in need in our community. At Mother Hubbard's Cupboard, Marie Cook met us when we arrived with a large van with approximately 250 full bags of food for those in need. The next stop was Nourish, North Carolina, where two loads of food and large SUVs were dropped off at the warehouse and a forklift had to be used to remove all the food donated for children in New Hanover County. The third load consisted of two more large SUVs filled with healthy snacks for the young scholars at Snipes Academy. And last but not least, we collected enough food to prepare over 75 blessing bags for unsheltered folks experiencing homelessness who are served by Walking Tall that is now called Feast Gathering United Methodist Church. And so thank you so much for your generosity. We give thanks to God for the ways that God continues to help us be the church. And now, would you pray with me? Oh God, we come to you because we know you will hear our cry. We come to you because you call us near. We come to you because you deliver and save. You have been faithful in the past, O oh Lord, and we believe that you will be faithful to us again. Do it again. O oh God, we come to you now with our prayers and petitions. We pray for our church and the church universal, for the humility to walk in your way. We pray for our nation and those around the world. Give us courage to walk in your way of peace. We pray for those who are in need. Give us ears to hear their cries and be agents of your mercy. We pray for those who have pain. Heal, touch, and deliver them, O God. You have healed us in the past, O God. Please do it again. Oh God, we thank you for our healers, for prophets, for eye-openers that you have given us, for doctors and nurses, for scientists and those who clean our hospitals, for poets and prophets, and for everyone who cries out when they see something not right. Strengthen and sustain them, O oh God. Sustain us when we feel like our strength is failing. O oh God, you have sustained us in the past. Do it again. O oh God, for all who feel like they are barely hanging on in these dark and cold days of winter, be our comfort. Give us new purpose, new vitality, or even just the provision to get us through the day. And trust you for more tomorrow. You have renewed us in the past, O oh God. Do it again. O oh Lord, we remember those who have died. And we ask that you would give comfort to those left behind. We remember those who are sick and who are lonely. 
And we lift our hidden prayers to you now, for you hear the cries of our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh God, you have comforted us in the past. Do it again. All honor and glory and praise is yours now and forever through the one who healed and who heals still. We pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We return our gratitude to God through giving our tithes and offerings. There are three ways that you can give. One is through our website by going to rightsillumc.org and clicking on that Give button. The second is through our Rightsill app for smartphones. And the third is by writing a check and sending that to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach 28480. And so now, as we hear this gift of music, let us give generously to God. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my feet, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me I need help. I can't figure it out. I don't know where the food is. I, I don't know how to get on to school. I need help getting my shoes on. I need help finding this. Have you ever said that? I've said I need help a lot. Sometimes I do it through my phone. I say I need help. Sometimes I just yell, I need help. Have you ever had anybody say if you maybe you don't understand if your teacher's saying something or your your mom or dad or other grown-up and has anybody ever said you know shh i bet they have sometimes it's probably good that we shh sometimes people have to get work done or sometimes maybe we're in a movie theater or even in church and we can't yell out really loud well Somebody is in our Bible story today. We have the story of a man who needed some help. And so he yelled really loud. His name was Bartimaeus, which is kind of a funny name. But he was sitting alongside of the road. Jesus and his disciples, which means Jesus' friends, they were walking along the road and a man named Bartimaeus who was blind, he had a disability, he couldn't see. 
he was sitting by the roadside. And so because he couldn't see back then, that meant that he couldn't have a job. That meant that he didn't have very much money. And that meant that he really wasn't able to go and do things like we can now. So he was sitting by the roadside. I bet it was cold at night. He had a cloak, it says. It's kind of like a kind of like a blanket like this. And he kept around him for warmth and he would he would kind of huddle up. Maybe if it was raining, he'd put it over his head. Maybe it says that he begged for money and so if people were coming by, he couldn't see them, but he could hear their footsteps. And so maybe he would reach out his cloak, his blanket, and catch the coins that they gave him. But Jesus was going by, and Bartimaeus couldn't see him, but he knew about Jesus. He knew that Jesus had a very special relationship with God and that Jesus was coming by. And so he started to shout out and say, I need some help, Jesus. He actually said something a little different. He said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And you know what people did? A lot of the people around them said, shh, don't bother Jesus. And do you know what Bartimaeus did? He shushed down, right? He just kind of went back there. No, he shouted even louder. He said, I need help. Jesus, have mercy on me. And so even though everybody was kind of moving Jesus along, Jesus, and who was that? He heard Bartimaeus and then he said, call him here. And so all of the people kind of parted so that Jesus and Bartimaeus could talk. It says in the Bible story that he was wearing his clothes, cloak and he just threw it off. And Jesus said, what do you need? What do you want? And he said, teacher, I want to see again. And so Jesus helped him see. This is such a cool story, and Pastor Carol is going to be telling us about it in our sermon. Um, but I'm wondering if there's something that you need help with from God. I know there's some things that I need help with. It's hard to be a person right now, and it's hard to know what the right thing to do is. And so sometimes I say, God, help, you know, really loud. Or sometimes I know of people who are sick, maybe because of COVID or maybe because of something else, or people who are lonely and just miss getting a hug and miss seeing their friends in church. And so I say, God, help. Please help this be over soon. Help us know the right thing to do. And so, you know, sometimes there are times in life, maybe in school or if your mom or dad or grown up has got to get some work done that we can't yell out help. But God can always hear us whenever we say, God, help, have mercy on us. So this week, don't be afraid to yell out for help from God. Maybe not yell at the top of your voice, but you can always, you're never bothering God when you say help, and God can do some awesome things. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that we can say, help, whenever we need it. Dear God, there are so many things that are sad. There are so many things that are confusing. There are so many people who are hurting. Please help. Amen. All right. Thank y'all. We'll see you soon. Hear the reading of God's Word from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And they called him to be still, and Jesus then stood still and said, Call him here. 
So they called the blind man, saying to him, Well, take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Friends, it's good to see you this morning. I can't actually see you, and I wish that I could, but it's good to be with you in this virtual space, worshiping God. And I welcome you to Wrightsville, to this service of worship, and, and to any ministry that is uh, part of the church's life and the community's life together. This morning, um, I am sharing with you from one of my favorite texts in the scriptures, one of my favorite stories in the Gospels. So let us pray as we enter into God's Word. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as this is one of my favorite Gospel stories, let me tell you why. It's a multi-layered story, as Mark tells it, a story that offers us so much about Jesus, about people, about some who see and some who don't, some who can't and some who won't. And it offers us much about our hope for the future. At first glance, we recognize only a couple of characters in the story. There's Jesus and a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. It's an account of Jesus' healing of Bartimaeus, restoring his sight. Now, just a couple of chapters prior to this one, Jesus, according to Mark, healed another man of blindness, a man at Bethsaida in Mark's eighth chapter. Jesus, in that account, used his hands and his own saliva, gradually healing the man's eyes. But for Bartimaeus, Jesus offers just a word. Go, your faith has made you well. Then with his sight immediately restored, Bartimaeus becomes one of Jesus' followers. Both of these men, the one unidentified but at Bethsaida and Bartimaeus were physically blind. But of course, there are other kinds of blindness. And we who are not a part of that very, very small percentage who suffer with limited to no sight may need to remember that this is a story that incorporates other forms of blindness as well. Sometimes we say, for example, that love is blind. Well, true enough, we tend to overlook or not even to see at all a character flaw, or disturbing behavior in someone we really love. We lose all objectivity to affection, even if the problem is very obvious to everyone else. There's something I would call obstinance, some things we just don't want to see. When my children were younger and still at home, it fell to one of them each week to take out the trash the night before collection day. More than once, on the morning the canister was supposed to be at the curb, ready for pickup, I'd find a trash bag, almost full, sometimes overflowing, still under the kitchen sink. Why was the trash not taken out? Well, there wasn't any trash. I didn't see any. What? Are you blind? Of course, I didn't say that. I exercised excellent restraint, but you know I wanted to say it. And instead, I told myself, it's easier for me to do it myself. And of course, it isn't either. And such an attitude produces a kind of blindness in me. But there is another kind of blindness as well. We have maybe, or we know people who have experienced seasons of just darkness and feeling isolated shrouded in darkness, searching desperately for a way out, a way to regain our faith and our footing, 
Even people of deep faith and wisdom have experienced times like these. The disciples, you remember, were in Jerusalem and they denied knowing Jesus in the last week of his life among them. And then later, after that denial, after he was crucified, they hid in the darkness and shelter of the upper room to avoid a fate like his. We read of St. John of the Cross, a 16th century Roman Catholic mystic who wrote a poem and then later a commentary about periods of spiritual darkness that he called the dark night of the soul. John Wesley, who started the Methodist movement in 18th century England, found himself faithless and, and frightened in the midst of a powerful storm. The storm was during his journey from America back to his home in England, and it followed a crushing experience where he had just left a mission that ended badly after it had begun badly, and he was grieving his failure. So feeling guilty, abandoned, alone for months after that experience, his too was like a dark night of the soul. Mother Teresa, 20th century saint, confessed that she too struggled with doubt. We could go on and on. Amanda Gorman wrote these beautiful words for the inauguration of President Joe Biden, and they were written on a day of violent assault on our nation's capital. She writes, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, the sea we must wade. Depression, guilt, failure, confusion, create a spiritual blindness over which we ourselves have little power. That healing is in God's hands. But we find in Isaiah words of the Lord who promised hope. I will lead the blind by the road they do not know. By paths they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. That's a promise, a promise that we see fulfilled each and every day if our eyes are open to it, a promise that we see fulfilled here in the story of Bartimaeus. Not just one person's blindness was healed that day. As Mark tells us, Jesus' disciples had high hopes for Jesus and by their association with, them, with him, high hopes for themselves. As a people of, of that time, they had endured oppression under the Roman occupation. They'd never had much money. They'd never had any status. But in Jesus, they saw a leader, one who bravely took on the religious establishment and any other challengers of his identity and purpose. In their minds, it was only a matter of time till Jesus established a whole new kingdom and they began to chatter about who'd get the best appointment to his cabinet. So Jesus answered brothers James and John, who'd been arguing about who was likely to get the corner office. And he said, ask them, what do you want me to do for you? Well, give us positions of honor. I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what they said. And Jesus replied, again in my paraphrase, you really are clueless, aren't you? You don't even know what you're asking. Well, no, of course they didn't because they couldn't see clearly who Jesus was, what he came to do, how he wanted to accomplish so much for all. Apparently, it was much easier to heal a physical condition than a spiritual one. But Jesus asked Bartimaeus the very same question he posed to James and John. What do you want me to do for you? 
And Bartimaeus was simple. I want to see. I want to see. And with a word, your faith has made you well. Bartimaeus, hearing the words, received not only sight, but his life again. Now, the same could not be said for the disciples, but for Bartimaeus, his sight and his life. He must have been blind for a very long time, and while we have no awareness as to the cause of that blindness, we do know that because of the disability, he was forced to beg, forced to suffer indignities that we can barely imagine, and for all intents and purposes, he was almost at the lowest rung of the social ladder. And so a lot of people probably thought he wasn't worthy of Jesus' time. Some may have even thought he deserved to be on the side of the road, blind, begging. And Mark tells us that at the time Jesus stopped, Bartimaeus was on that side of the road as far away as the able and the elite could push him. But when he had heard that Jesus was coming, he began to call out, and while others tried to silence him, he persisted, Jesus, have mercy on me. You can hear his desperation. You can hear his determination as well. This is a man I know will help me. I can't let this opportunity be taken from me. And isn't it curious, friends, that the one without sight is the one with the most insight into Jesus? No one in Mark's gospel thus far has been able to perceive so much about the Savior. But Bartimaeus sees who Jesus is. This is God's agent. This is the embodiment of mercy and compassion and love. This is, as we have known him to be called, Emmanuel, God with us. And here it gets really interesting because while Jesus is walking with his followers by his side and just behind him, he hears the blind man cry out to him and he stops. And he says, call him, bring him here to me. So the very crowd that had tried to silence the man is now asked to assist in bringing Bartimaeus to Jesus. So by Jesus' design, they're becoming collaborators in his ministry. This was just as God had commanded because God intended that we would not ignore the needs of the poor, the blind, the lame, the leper. We'd care for them as God does. We'd see them as God does. Jesus invites those who were trying to rebuke him now to participate in this same care giving. And in doing this, he's effectively turned the table on the disciples. He's exposing their blindness. They can't see Jesus or at least not what he represents as savior of the world. They can't see Bartimaeus as a Bartimaeus rather as an equal. They can't see their own participation in disregarding the poor and the broken and the hopeless. But he presents us with the same choice. Mark presents us with the very same choice to participate or to continue on our way, to open our eyes and see Jesus for who he is and what matters to him, or to disregard what is right there in front of us. It's a story that's told in this as well as other gospels, but I want to be sure we hear the good news here. The good news is that Jesus sees us all of us clearly and with a love that is boundless, a love that is forgiving, a love that will not force itself upon us. He sees us and recognizes our blind spots. He wasn't trying to condemn 
the disciples, but rather to confront their limitations and give them a choice to confess their need for healing or to continue on their way. The same choice he gives to each of us. You know, we all have blind spots. Sometimes our blind spots may be our inability to see the pain and the frustration of illiteracy. But if we saw it, we know we could do something about it. Maybe it's not being able to see the longing of an immigrant seeking a safer, freer life. Not everyone can see the consequences of a single nation that consumes 75% of the Earth's natural resources. Maybe we can't see the inequity of a vaccine distribution that at this point means Africa will not get a vaccine until 2022. Could we do something about it if we could see clearly? Do we want to see clearly so that we can be empowered to be a part of the solution with Jesus? Sometimes I don't get it. I can't see it. I'm seminary trained and theologically blind. I'm not sure how to reconcile all the losses due to COVID-19 with a God I know to be good and generous. Jesus, have mercy. I want to see. And the answer that comes to me, as it did to Jesus' followers, is this, your healing comes through your participation in my work. For I came not to be served, but to serve. Once again, our poet laureate brings forth an image we will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. A wondrous world. And then images from the scriptures of a lion and a lamb together. Of rich and poor together. Of slave and free together. And male and female together. Raising a wounded world to a wondrous one. We remember that Bartimaeus, at the beginning of the story, is on the side of the road. And at the end of the story, he is on the road with Jesus, following him, engaging in the very things that Jesus does with the very people that Jesus loves. Jesus longs to heal and restore our sight so that we can see clearly what's broken, who's in despair, and how the strengths of a few can become the power of the many. What do you want me to do for you? And he's asking that of you and of me. So why is it so hard to heal the blindness of those who are closest to Jesus? Is it as Archibald MacLeish has said? Religion is at its best when it makes us ask hard questions of ourselves. It's at its worst when it deludes us into thinking we have all the answers for everybody else. Hard questions. We learned last week that among the nominees for the Nobel Peace Prize 2021 are two nominations with roots in the United States. First, former President Donald Trump was nominated for his accomplishments in the Israeli-United Arab Emirate relations under the Abraham Accords. 
The other, the Black Lives Matter movement, was recognized for its ability to raise global awareness and consciousness about racial justice. Now, the one who submitted the nomination, whose name I will surely butcher, Petter Eide of Norway, traced the beginning of Black Lives Matter to 2013, following the acquittal of the man who shot Trayvon Martin. Then in 2014, the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Garner, both of whom died as a result of police brutality, and then the deaths of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd in 2020. Many of these circumstances led to protests, mostly peaceful ones, but they were intended, all of them, to raise awareness of injustice and racism. One positive outcome cited in the nomination is that a lot of people have recognized their own blindness to people of color. Blindness to racism as a social pandemic. Blindness, not only in the US, but also in Africa and much of Europe and indeed all over the world. The good news, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, to heal the blind, to set free the captives. And a word of hope? Well, once again, from our poet laureate, a new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and keep you safe, secure, and seeing. Amen.